I know Joe Rogan actually believes all encryption will be broken. And the media is, you know, talking about this, saying, oh, Q day, it's coming. And if you think about the some of the things that force us into action in this world is we all need to earn a living, right? So we need money to acquire resources. Well, what if it gets to the point where that's not a factor anymore? What is money essentially right now? It's all ones and zeros, right? And what is the bottleneck? Well, the bottleneck is encryption, mm. right? So that's how you protect people from stealing your ones and zeros. But what if it gets to the point where we're all using quantum computing? Well, then there is no more encryption. So how do we reconcile with the fact that everyone has access to everything yep. all the time? I mean, how do we even enforce that? Like, what do you do about an even distribution of information, which is essentially wealth? Because information is numbers. Numbers yep. are wealth. What is it? Like, where does it go yep. when there's no encryption? And essentially, we're pretty close to that, right? Yep. Once quantum computing can crack encryption, which it will be able to do. It's all nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> right? it, it, it totally. All yeah. those... What if that wasn't just podcast hype? And I know Joe Rogan actually believes all encryption will be broken. And the media is, you know, talking about this, saying, oh, Q day, it's coming, it's coming. And I wanted to make this video to make it clear that it's not all encryption. And just to give some levity and reality to the situation. And I understand. I love to listen to Joe Rogan. He doesn't know anything about encryption or cryptography. I've worked with some of the top cryptographers in the world. And I want to break this down so that everybody understands what's actually happening. So what if the encryption we rely on to protect our money, our identities, our businesses... We're already under threat. Hi, I'm Deborah Baker, CISSP, CCSP, and this is the CISO Guide to Cyber Resilience. Today, we're diving in to how quantum computing could break the internet's locks and what you can do to stay protected. Imagine the internet as a fortress built of math and not mortar. Every password, encrypted email, and digital signature, secured by math problems so difficult, today's computers can't solve them in a lifetime. That's what we've built cybersecurity on. But quantum computers, they don't play by the same rules. They're not just faster computers. They're a different kind of computer entire, and they're already here. Now, first, let's pause for a teaching moment. Symmetric encryption, that's like using the same key to lock and unlock a box. Fast, efficient, both sides need to share the same secret. And this is what's used to encrypt your data because it is so fast. So when you have a database and the things are encrypted, the data is encrypted, this is AES-128 or AES-256. Asymmetric encryption uses two keys, one public to encrypt and one private to decrypt. This powers things like HTTPS, HSSL, and TLS, and is also used with digital signatures. Now, the trick is, is that the asymmetric encryption is used to encrypt and securely share the symmetric encryption key. We layer these techniques to protect nearly everything online. Banking, messaging, authentication, you name it. Symmetric encryption uses the same key to encrypt and decrypt. It's fast, it's efficient. Think of it like both parties sharing the same password. The most common algorithm is AES-256. Even with quantum computing, symmetric encryption like AES-256 still holds up. Quantum gives only a quadratic speed up through something called Grover's algorithm. So AES-256 becomes as secure as, for example, AES-128 which is still very secure. 
No redesign needed, just bigger keys. It survives the quantum era. Now, here's the bad news. Asymmetric encryption, the kind behind HTTPS, TLS, and digital signatures, relies on tough math problems, RSA, factoring large primes, and ECC solving discrete logarithms. Quantum doesn't just make these easier, it breaks them instantly. The latest that I heard in October 2025 at a security conference I was at is we are at six bits, for example, for an RSA 2048. So we've got a ways to go. So this is because of Shor's algorithm, a quantum method that cracks RSA and ECC at their core. Bigger keys won't save them. They do not survive the quantum era. What's the solution? We need new algorithms. That's where post-quantum cryptography, or PQC, comes in. And we'll be talking more about that a little later in the video. Now, I wanted to give you one more example of a typical SSL session, also that uses TLS. So let's connect it to something you use every day, secure web sessions. Most HTTPS connections today use TLS version 1.2 or even better version 1.3. These rely on symmetric algorithms like AES, but they also rely on RSA or ECC during the key exchange. So even though AES survives, the key agreement process doesn't. That's where the quantum risk lives. Unless we replace RSA, ECC with post-quantum algorithms, your secure session isn't future-proof. So remember, symmetric encryption like AES is okay in the quantum era. Asymmetric encryption like RSA, we have to replace it. And that's the heart of post-quantum preparation. Quantum computing uses qubits, not bits, the ones and zeros that we're used to. They exist in superposition, being both zero and one at the same time. They can be entangled, sharing state across space instantly. That gives quantum computers the ability to try millions of possibilities at once. And another thing to think about quantum computers is they're very good at predicting what comes next. So you can think of predicting, let's say, you know, how the stock market's going to do. But as far as a quantum computer, like replacing your desktop, that's not going to happen. So we'll still have regular laptops, desktops, and servers, but quantum computers will be used for very specific items. So not just, you know, your regular word processing and things like that. With Shor's algorithm, a quantum computer could factor huge numbers fast, breaking RSA, ECC, and much of the asymmetric encryption we depend on. NIST has warned quantum will break current encryption. But again, asymmetric encryption. Now think about this. Every secure connection today, TLS, HTTPS, VPNs, rely on that fragile map. But attackers aren't waiting. They're harvesting encrypted data now. And I'd like to say it's more like nation states that can actually harvest this data now and store it so they can decrypt it later once quantum is ready. But again, the information that's stored like in your database or a file that's encrypted on your hard drive is going to be encrypted with AES, whether it's 128 or 256. And that's quantum resistant. Imagine someone copying your lock safe knowing they'll have the master key in a decade. You won't even know what happened. But as quantum computers progress, we have to use larger key sizes. Right now, 
AES-128 is fine. AES-256 is recommended. And we know that it's quantum resistant. And going forward, as the quantum computers get better and better, we may have to encrypt it even higher and higher. So that's where they're thinking, oh, eventually they'll be able to break AES-128. So there is good news. Two solutions are emerging and actually more than emerging. We actually have post-quantum algorithms in the OpenSSL module version 3.5 that was released in April 2025. The two options we have are quantum cryptography. This uses quantum mechanics to secure communications itself. Example, quantum key distribution can detect if someone's eavesdropping. But these will be more expensive solutions. The solution is post-quantum cryptography, which is also known as PQC. And these are new algorithms designed to be strong, even against quantum computers. Think lattice-based, hash-based, and code-based encryption. NIST has actually already finalized these, and they're in the OpenSSL cryptographic module available today. What should you do as a CISO, a leader in your organization? Well, for CISOs and VCISOs, start a quantum risk assessment. I would say the most important thing is to have an asset inventory and understand, you know, not only where your hardware lives, but most importantly, where your software lives and understanding what software you're using and making sure that it is meeting these and using the post-quantum cryptography. So find out what encryption are you using. If you're a software development company, what open SSL version are you using? Where are your keys stored? And what data needs to stay secure for 5, 10, even 20 years? For individuals, no need to panic. Reset every password. Of course, you need to be using multi-factor authentication, but what you need to do is make sure you keep your operating system and your applications updated. Make sure that they're patched because the big companies like Microsoft and Apple, they already know about the PQC. They're already making sure that they're using the proper algorithms. And like I said, they're already available. So another thing you can do if you're an information security leader is probably in the next two years, for one thing you want to do is set up a, if you're in a large organization, is you want to have like a post-quantum group that's going to keep up with where the quantum computers are, making sure that you're using the correct cryptographic module that has the PQC algorithms, but for just individual users, make sure you keep your computer updated and patched and you'll be fine. The European banking sector has already been warned to prepare. U.S. government agencies are quietly shifting their encryption protocols. Will quantum computers break RSA in five years, 10, 15? Well, we don't know the exact date. But we do know this, it will happen faster than most people expect. So you need to have a plan to be prepared within the next five years. Cyber resilience isn't just about patching firewalls. It's about anticipating change. Quantum computing is a paradigm shift. When it arrives, systems will either withstand the shock or they'll crumble. As a cybersecurity strategist, this is why I founded Trusted CISO, to help companies prepare for moments exactly like this. This is your chance to build resilience before the threat materializes. So here's your to-do list. Audit your encryption. Talk to your vendors. Are they preparing? Add quantum to your compliance roadmap. Plan your migration and make sure you are updating your software and patching it. 
If you want help building a quantum safe strategy, trusted CISO is ready to guide you. Let's lock down your future today. I'm Deborah Baker. Tune in to stay informed, stay protected, and stay cyber resilient. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to pick up a copy of my book, A CISO Guide to Cyber Resilience, available on Amazon. And remember to stay cyber resilient.